I think mine is the green one. I just want to use. I just want to use my own headphones. Oh wait, maybe not. It feels a little big. Just getting underway with the first semifinal of the day. It's Bob Chen versus Sean Zhang. I think these two have played before, actually. Uh, maybe back in 2013 or 2014 in, in one of the LA tournaments. I actually think Sean Zhang took that one. Maybe either six or seven games, so it should be, a, should be a fun match to watch. The winners are competing for the first spot in the finals of the Swan Tao Pre-National Open. The first tournament of its kind, actually. Yeah, I heard that they're going to be doing these uh, a few times a year, actually, so should be pretty, should be pretty cool. Yeah, it was so much fun to play in it, so much fun to watch it. It would have been a little more fun if I was still in the tournament, though. <laughs> in the semi-finals, yes. <laughs> Oh, maybe in a few years. Maybe, maybe not a realistic expectation. Okay. Both of these players rated roughly around 2,700. I think Bob is actually closer to 28 now than 27, but Sean right around that 2,700 mark. This is the first time I think Bob has played anyone even remotely close to his rating level. That's right. And I personally think that, you know, the actual rating number itself might not matter all that much because it just it's kind of like a, um, a result of, you know, the matches you've happened to have pretty recently. That's true. Uh, so, you know, like a, a high 2600 and a low 2700, are, uh, they're all pretty much the same level. And we expect this one to go right down to the wire. Yeah. A couple of really nice underspin shots there by Sean. Gives him a 2 0 lead. Sean reading that fast long serve pretty well. <sighs> Made a pretty strong return. I think Sean's also a visiting player here. Um, I think from the LA area as well. That's right. Wow. Slow and spinny banana flip there by Sean. Bob is right there to counterattack. Coincidentally, I happened to play Sean uh, towards the end of May for at the San Diego tournament. I doubt he remembers that. <laughs> Definitely a significant moment in his life. <laughs> Nice return to serve there. 3 2, Sean. That front loop just drifting a little long. Again, Sean is really going for the, for the corner. It's going as deep as he possibly can. Yeah, I think from what I've seen in this tournament, Sean's more of, more of a forehand oriented player, where it seems like Bob is quite a bit more balanced. That being said, that was an Super powerful backhand by Sean. Wow. A lot of spin on that one. Yeah, you can see Sean, as soon as he opens up with the backhand, he's looking to step around and, and hit that forehand. I think we're going to see a lot of that this match. <coughs> Really nice banana flip there by Bob. You typically don't see that ball go to the forehand corner just because of the spin that's on it, but he did a really nice job reading it and redirecting that ball down to the forehand corner. And a lot of times players do aim at the backhand corner with those flips just because 
you know, your opponent gets spin that's going away from them. Yep. That's typically a little harder to deal with. Yeah, it's a little easier to flip that ball to the backhand side just because you can hit the side of the ball and it almost, you don't really need to read the spin as well when you do that. Like in that instance. Reverse pendulum serve there, deep to the backhand corner. Again, I assume that was topspin. <laughs> instances where going for spin as opposed to power comes in handy. Yeah, it the seems like... Had, yeah, the ball had just dipped so low before Sean could get to it. Yeah, he was just a little too far away from... <laughs> nice combination there. Reverse pendulum short to the forehand. Bob has to move so far to the forehand corner to get around that ball to banana flip. And Sean just hits a nice backhand cross court. Bob's not able to get there back in time. Incredible forehand counter lose from both sides there. From what I've seen, that's really Sean's strength. His forehand counter loop is really, really strong. Recovering balls off the off the net guard in, yeah. in that shot drop rally and Sean getting the upper hand with the first attack. to just clip the top of the net. Nice long serve there from Sean catching Bob a little off guard. And Bob's starting position on receiving the serve is very, very oriented towards Shot balls. He is super quick at stepping back on the fast balls, but and Sean again, really nice combination where he's forcing Bob to banana flip into the forehand corner towards the middle, and then he's punishing him by hitting a really really deep ball to Bob's backhand corner. Bob's not able to recover in time. Let's see how Bob adjusts in the next game. get tough you can kind of expect the home crowd to get behind Bob definitely just looking in the crowd there are a ton of ICC kids here all supporting their coach Bob Chen wow strong strong forehand loop there from Bob even the scorekeeper and the ref here both train primarily at ICC Kieran and Roger Wow, that, that counter loop had 
have so much side spin on it. Wow. That ball just getting a little bit too high. Sean all over it. Getting a little lucky there. Ball just clipping the top of the net. <laughs> it's amazing how it's ball be colored on that one. What an amazing shot. I think Sean clipped the net there again. Bob able to keep the ball on the table. Force out the error. It almost seemed that Sean's default loops are kind of, you know, more loaded with side spin and not so much top. Uh, that they they stay pretty low and, you know, they have a slightly flatter trajectory. And it'd be interesting to see if, you know, statistically he does get he does end up with more of the net cards here than Bob. Yeah. Sean catching Bob out there with the long, fast serve again. Hard to, hard to make those work multiple times in a row against players of these caliber, though. This caliber, though. That's right. I mean, the surprise element is, is what gets it to work in the first place. 3-5. So. But then again, Bob has such a good shot game that the only way you're going to disable it is by by hitting him long on the backhand or forehand side every now and then. You generally don't want to serve fast and long to his forehand because I've seen him rip that several times. Bob Chen mounting a little bit of a comeback here. Yeah, he gets it five all. I'll be honest, I thought Bob was dead at that point. Yeah, if that block had come back, yeah. His receive was, again, just a bit too high, but he was there for the counter. You're right, Sean's, Sean's loop seemed to have just a little more side spin than I'm used to seeing. I think that's throwing Bob off a little bit. These players are just so fast, but still, you still need some amount of time, and sometimes it's just, you know, it just takes you a tad too long. Yeah. Yep. Really nice step around there by Sean. Sort of sense the confidence growing on Sean's side. He's, he's making all the right returns, he's playing all positive. Winning a key point there. Cuts Sean's lead down to one. That was a bit of a loose serve. Um, Bob stepped in for, uh, for a really short one and 
just caught him off guard. He ended up pushing that up a little too high. Yeah, it was a little bit of a different motion than he's been using all game, so I wonder if that has something to do with uh, Bob getting caught a little bit there. 7-9. Really, really nice reverse pendulum there by Bob. there and Sean has two game points on his serve and that's Bob's shot game right there he's just so good at redirecting the ball and still keeping it short and low <laughs> he's one of the few players who actually cuts the ball and aggressively drops it super short and close to the net meaning you really have to step in to play those balls. And if you don't, you end up pushing it too high and... Wow. So, really good third ball attack combo there. Sean's footwork is so, so fast on that step around. You can almost feel the tension in the room. Bob being down. Not a familiar sight for a lot of us. It's definitely not what the home, home crowd expected to see. I think maybe in this game you're gonna see you're gonna start seeing Bob play a lot more towards the forehand corner of the table. Because what what's been happening in the past couple of games is that, you know, Sean plays a backhand and he steps around on the backhand side. You kinda wanna keep him from doing that or kind of want to give him second thoughts about doing that by playing a ball down the forehand side every now and then yeah just keeping keep him guessing you might lose that point but still uh, it'll at least make sean think twice before stepping around wow or you could just do that and <laughs> go down the back end and he's not looking yeah. you could just hit winners every point it just sounds way easier than strategizing <laughs> Another nice backhand, beautiful backhand banana flip there by Bob. Seems like he's being a little bit more aggressive on the receives now. Yeah, he really needs to play positive. He's gonna grab this one back. Wow. Three balls all to the same spot. Yeah. All very, very different than what we saw in the first couple of games. Maybe that was his adjustment. You know, be a little bit more aggressive on the short, short backhands. He certainly has the ability. Wow. Makes sense, right? The more aggressive you are on the short backhands, the harder it is for Sean to step around. And seems like the adjustment would make sense. Yeah, absolutely. We just saw that like he wasn't quite ready for this particular step around and ended up hitting it out. Bob jumping out to a nice comfortable leave here in the third game. Pretty much all set up by nice backhands. Ooh. A little bit lucky that ball catching the back edge of the table. Sean with the apology. Another nice counter to the step around backhand down the lines. I think you were mentioning that as a possible adjustment at the end of game two. That's right, and this one was just such high quality. It pretty much hit the corner. No longer convinced they can't hear you, man. Bob 
Rob should probably listen to everything I'm saying and do the exact opposite. <laughs> looking a little rattled in this game. Yeah, he's definitely lost his the, the bounce in his step that he had in last game. Wow. Now, they, on the other hand, it looks like Bob now has that bounce in his step. That flick was just executed with so much confidence. He's done it a million times before. That was really nice. Well played there by Sean. You can see Bob took a, took a step back, expecting the push to go long, and Sean was still able to keep the ball short. Earned him the long push. A little bit too heavy there. Bob Shots. using the towel break to take a little bit of, the, of a breather. Uh, Make sure he's not you know, easing off with the lead. Wow, really, really nice shot there by Bob. When you can make one of these players at their level lose their balance, you know you must have hit a high quality ball. Another really, really nice backhand down the line there by Bob. <coughs> and uh, this serve from Bob. He still has a four point buffer, so it may not be the worst thing, but still. strong flip kill from Sean. I think Sean knew that one was coming. Even before Bob looped that backhand, Sean was already getting ready to step around. Strong forehand by Sean. Bob still with two more game points left. Let's see if he's able to take advantage and capitalize. He, def he definitely wants to close it out ASAP because you don't want to be in a situation where you're 3-0 down. And that after having a major lead. And he does just that. Nice job by Bob Chen. Taking game number three. Really felt like uh, a lot of the adjustments he was making in that game were directed towards avoiding the step around. You know, he was being a little bit more aggressive on the backhand flip taking the backhand down the line. Basically, every every adjustment he made was was with that goal in mind, and it seemed like he was pretty successful. Yeah, absolutely. And he was also, go I mean, he also took it a step further, which is to play a wide to the backhand first before going down the line. Yeah, uh, yeah very so good point. So once you step around, you really have way more ground to cover to get to that backhand down the line. Yeah. I think before we saw, especially when Sean was stepping around, Bob was blocking back into the backhand corner, and now as soon as Sean steps around, Bob is looking to take that ball down the line. And Sean, when he's moving, or when anybody's moving, it's hard to be as effective as you are when you know where the ball's coming. You can hear Sean trying to bump himself up, uh, put the pass game behind him, and try and play positive, try and play aggressive. Wow. Great shot there by Bob. Countering that banana flip. Chen being a little bit more aggressive with the banana flip. 
Sean not able to re-loop that ball. of a half-long push from Bob. Yeah, the half-long detection there was really, really strong. I'll be honest, I probably would have pushed it. Clipping <laughs> uh, the net and the edge. Wow. Bob getting double lucky there. <clears throat> snap that these guys have is just so quick. Yeah, they also like, they also put their whole body behind their flips. They just step in and they've got the whole tiny little waist turn that adds sort of more power. Both these players, of course, grew up in China and both very, very well trained. <laughs> Sean, definitely the more vocal of the two. Typically, Bob is always always very, very quiet when he plays. Don't see a lot of showing. He stays very calm, tries to keep his composure. You almost never see a lot of expression on his face either. That was an amazing one. Really great rally there by both players. Sean pinning Bob to the backhand side, making sure he's getting Fishes back as opposed to a counter loop. Earns himself a two, two point gap. Whoa! You can really see the amount of spin that Sean is adding on Bob's underspin serves. Bob just not able to manage that one. Bob attempted a fade down the backhand side, but again, the ball goes in the net. Bob might want to rethink his serve strategy at this point because the short game shape is clearly not working. I mean, the last thing you want is to lose points by pushing them into the net. Sure, what happened there? If it was uh, an edge or put the net, I think it was more like a miss hit that didn't really transfer a lot of power on the ball. Maybe it just ended up Ooh, a really loose serve there by Sean. Bob not having any of it. seen Bob executing his strategy from from the previous game too much this this game seems like he's kind of shied away from uh, trying to eliminate that step around such good footwork he was got into position played that really strong loop down the forehand side Sean with still a three point lead, 5 8. <coughs> Bob trying to load it up with spin. Missing by a centimeter. That's about the most expression you'll see out of Bob Chen. A little frustrated. Oh. 
the surface hit the top of the net there. I'm so quick on the counter. He served pretty much exactly the same serve as the net one yeah. and got the response he expected. Pop goes to the backhand banana flip. Just misses long and Sean takes the game. Game five getting underway here. This match is far, far, far from over. Even though there is a 3-1 lead with Sean, Bob is not one to give up easily. Sean is in a really strong position though. And again, you can see the spring in his step, the, the chose at the end of every point. Struggling just a bit with uh, Sean's serve there. Great step around. What? Somehow Sean's shot game is really giving Bob a lot of trouble. He's not able to do the things that he wants to. Yeah, definitely. One of the few people that has been able to match Bob. Bob calls timeout. Trailing 1-4 in game five. he's not even able to execute the strategy he had in game three which was to get into these backhand rallies and then control uh, the placement with his backhand yep. like a lot of the points aren't even getting out to that stage when um, when some of his pushes are going into the net or or just sitting up a little too high for sean to make a strong opening yeah i think uh i think it looks like sean's made a really good adjustment trying to default towards a short game and it seems like he's He's winning a lot of these points. <clears throat> I haven't seen Bob serve fast and long for a while. So. Well, usually whenever you say that, he serves fast and long, so... <laughs> yep. oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, like Sean was getting <coughs> super comfortable with the short game, and this is one of the ways you stop that. I mean, he managed to get an outright point. It's a really key free point there for Bob. Oh, oh. That just came around the net from <laughs> where I sat. I, I don't even know what happened there. So I don't think he... He lifted the ball enough to be able to go over the net. Yeah. It was just so flat. Yeah, it's a light ball. Yeah, I think you're right. Incredible how, despite the ball hitting the net and making a real sharp turn in in his trajectory, Sean is able to get there and make make such a high quality loop. 
he was probably relying on his on the strength of that first loop to surprise Bob, but then another wow. And that was the strategy we saw in game game three. That's right. Back end down the lines. This time Bob was able to make a good opening on the on Sean's serve. Yeah, it seems like he he's trying not to get into that short game battle anymore. No longer pushing his returns. Now Sean called timeout. Pretty solid recovery, I think. When Bob called timeout, it was 4-1, and then it was even 5-1 after the timeout. That's right. Now uh, Sean's lead cut down to one. Probably a good timeout on Sean's part. He'd be looking to close this match out in this in this game. Definitely now, yeah, not wanting to give Bob a chance because he is the better player. He has, uh, well, he's the more accomplished player for sure. Yeah. Never want to give any of these guys at this level any extra room to breathe. So I think you're absolutely right. He's going to do everything he can to close it out this game. <clears throat> Chan Meng was leading Sun Ying Sha 3 1 uh, in the Japan Open, and she managed to come back and win the match. So. Chan with a, with a couple of loose tournaments uh, over the last few points. Pretty uncharacteristic. I wonder if Bob is changing something on his end, forcing out these errors. Perhaps adding maybe a little less spin on the ball. Probably right about the about the variation and spin um, in some of these rallies. Catching Sean out. There's just so much going on under the hood that doesn't meet the eye. Yeah, and that we're not good enough to spot. <laughs> Again with Sean with the, with the forehand error, just trailing a little long this time though. All that side spin on that ball just carried it wide. Bob has earned himself a nice two-point lead here. And the serve. And a tiny little break while they figure out where the ball went. We've definitely seen a shift. Uh, in the last, even in the last few points, where we're no longer seeing them battle it out in the short game, it seems like they're much more content to have these f away from the table rallies. <laughs> Bob trying the long serve again. Sean, that time was ready for it though. Absolutely. And on that second loop, he just took, out, took down the pace just a little bit, just to make it drop a little short in front of Bob. And again, to your point, you can see that side spin. It's incredible. I think it, it first bounced in the middle of the table and it ended up on the side over the end. Wow, Bob finding the middle again. That was incredible touch by Bob on the, on the receive there. <coughs> It's amazing how often they can find the middle with how good their footwork is. Yeah. Bob earns himself two game points with the serve. That's exactly what Sean was trying to avoid with that timeout at 5 6. But here we are. Yeah. Oh. Wow. I didn't even... Was that at the edge? Uh, yeah, it was right on the corner. Yeah. Great yeah. ball by ball. <laughs> wow. So just a couple of moments ago, Sean was up 5-1 in that game. 
And Bob Chen comes back and takes it 11-8. Sean with a little shake of the head. It's not what, we, what he wanted. Seemed like a worthwhile timeout. At least on Bob's side. Absolutely. Let's see if Bob can keep it up. I don't know about you, but I really want to see a game seven. I think everybody wants to see a game seven. Start us off in game six, trailing two games to three. Starts things oh. off, gets in a little no spin push. So many quick backhands and then steps around. Those are the types of rallies we want them as, as spectators. <laughs> really strong play by both players. Sean could see Bob step over for the for the flip out of the corner of his eye and it was ready for the reloop. defaulting back to the, the backhand flip to the forehand corner as well. Sean not looking happy. That ball just catching the top of the net. 3-1 to Bob. That's up. trying to go down the line with that one. Again, you can see that Sean is not super happy about having to play more than one backhand yep. in each rally. Yeah. Yeah. Very similar points to those last couple. Bob sort of baited out the banana flip and hit a strong backhand to the backhand corner. And then Bob took advantage as he was out of position. kind of a similar strategy to what Sean was doing in game one. Bob earns himself a 5-1 lead. That long push to the backhand was intended as a surprise and, and wasn't the highest quality loop you'd see from Sean, but it was enough to do the, do the job. Yeah. It was amazing, his recovery, because you could tell him. You could even see the surprise on his face. He still was able to loop it. So much spin on that. Spinny, spinny. Wow. Combination. Almost feels like the last three points have been identical, at least on Bob's serve. And Sean is always taking a step back after playing his first backhand, which leaves him with more room to cover when Bob goes down the line. You can see Sean making an adjustment there, no longer taking the backhand flip. Bob just adding a bit of extra quality on that backhand takes the point. He just gave up a little there. <laughs> Sean, I the entertainer. 
I think at this level, it's pretty tough to come back from a 2-9 deficit. And there's a couple, couple choices you can make there. One, you can entertain the crowd, or two, you can take some risks. And John decides to entertain the crowd and ends up winning the point. That's right. Yeah, he is, he is super nice, though. <laughs> I think the time we played, he was, you know, it was just like going for the, for the around the nets and <laughs> Ooh. Sean just giving up yeah, that's that's sixth game. <laughs> doesn't want to show his hand for the seventh game give Bob any extra information yeah. we for one of those new Hirano style strawberry flicks <laughs> <laughs> great comeback though by Bob glad we get to see a nice game seven it's going to be interesting to see what strategies of them come out of the gate with. Bob trying to try and continue doing what he's doing. Sean's probably going to need to switch things up a bit. Not sure really where the adjustment's going to be, but it seemed like earlier he was winning some of the short game points, a little more of the short game points. He's very successful with the step around. Bob, on the other hand, much more successful when he's aggressive with his backhand and both actually cross court and down the line, just anything you can do to avoid that step around. That's right. Uh, I think the key is going to be if Sean can find a serve or a set of serves that that Bob isn't comfortable attacking, a set of short serves that he's not com comfortable attacking, you know, force more of the short game and. Yeah. And try to knock some points off of that. Uh, because when Bob is serving, it's almost entirely up to him whether you start with a short game or not. Exactly. Yep. All right, here we go, game seven. Crowd's getting a little feisty here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure everybody here wanted to see a game seven, probably except for Sean. Bob getting pumped up. Huge forehand to take the first point. Oh. Oh, getting a little lucky there. You can definitely see Sean, has, he's lost that bounce in his step from the first few, few games. Not sure if he's still thinking about that 5-1 lead he had in the, in the fifth. Serving 2-0. I'm sure Sean is, is an experienced enough player to know how to put it behind him. I think what, it's most, what it is mostly is he's probably thinking through, you know, the, the vast array of weapons he has and trying to figure out what's going to work. Strong forehand there by Sean. Nice to see Bob a little bit more animated than usual. We saw this actually at the U.S. Open as well. When he gets into these tight situations, he uh, he definitely gets a bit more excited than the rest of the match. Yeah, absolutely. I still remember that match against Takuya Jin from yep. Japan. That's exactly the match the I was thinking of. Yeah. <laughs> Sean might want to try to change up the placement of his first opening loop a little, mm. rather than always going back, going to Bob's backhand. Yeah. Of course, if you play to his forehand, there's a good chance that he'll get killed. Bob takes a 4-2 lead going to the first towel break. Again, Sean getting that point off of the, off the shot game and attack combination. It's basically going to come down to who can, who can execute their strategy a bit better and force the other into a situation they're not comfortable with. Wow, that, that was an amazing shot drop to the backhand side from Sean. Uh, spinny, spinny. 
Yeah, it looked like he was gonna go and push it super deep, but I mean the stroke looked that way. step around there but Bob's shot just had a little bit too much quality there not to work getting caught a little bit more into the elbow as opposed to being able to fully step around yeah I wonder if you would have made it if there was more room in the court but then it's always a huge psychological edge to get to five in the last game when you switch sides yeah Usually the person that gets to five first is in a great spot. there by Bob, but Sean is right there for the counter. What a shot, wow. I'm going with the short under serve. <laughs> Gives up the first loop. Sean just mistimes it slightly. Bob takes the point. <clears throat> yeah, and given the number of backhand fades down the line that he's seen, his you can tell that he's hesitant to step around. Because of these loops, like he's not moving all the way to make enough room for him to execute a good loop. Yeah, and he actually went for a backhand opener this time. It's all about instilling that that doubt in your opponent's mind. I think you were saying this earlier, even if you miss, it's if there's just that little bit of uncertainty, sometimes that can that can be enough. Sean serving four eight. Bob looking very, very comfortable now. May have, may have jinxed him there a little bit. <laughs> it's a heavy underspin, so... Uh, <clears throat> yeah, in this 11-point format, I don't think anybody gets comfortable with the 4-5-point with the lead, because you know things can change. That's true, yes. Yeah. Incredible rally there. Sean with a couple of monstrous loops. Yeah, I think the loose at this point, you're, you're, you're just going to go out swinging. 9-6 down in the seventh, you really have to just take all your chances. Bob taking his time here, trying to think through all the possibilities. between 10-6 and 9-7. Nine, 9-7 seven. Nine, seven when your opponent has service. Almost as good as 9-9. Nine, nine. Yeah. 
Bob with four game match points. Ooh. And Sean Serb does a double dribbler just over the net. And there it is. Bob Chen comes down from the he comes back from a 3-1 deficit to take it in seven games over Sean Zhang. Fun style. What a match. It's going to be hard to top that one. Coming up next, we have Tao Wen Zong and Nicholas Teo in the other semifinal. Stay tuned. How many people left after that? Sorry. How many people left after that? Oh, that's crazy. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, so Sean did have a fan base here. Hmm? So Sean did have a fan base here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who did you choose uh, ref or ref? I don't know either, man. I know that's who the team can be with. Just about to get underway, Tao Wen Zong and Nicholas Tio. This is going to be an interesting match. Tao is actually Nick is Nick's coach. How's that for uh, an interesting matchup? I wonder what's going through both of their minds right now. They must both know each other so well know exactly what each other's capable of. It's also very interesting psychologically. Can can the student beat the master? Yeah. Definitely a lot of pressure on Tao. 
and this is the second semi-final at the Swan Tao Pre-National Open. Yep. Bob Chen has already booked his place in the finals with with a three uh, with a four three defeat over Sean Zhang from LA. Nick starts off with a long serve to Tao's backhand. Seems like everybody's go-to strategy today. <laughs> starting starting all the way back in the round of 16 with London. To Only when the commentators call for it. <laughs> <laughs> Backhand just trailing a little bit long there. <clears throat> Both players teasing each other out, uh, getting their strokes tuned in for the first few points. Yeah, the first first uh, set of any match is always interesting as both players figure each other out. I I don't know how much each of these guys are going to be doing that just because of how familiar they are with each other, but. It's generally you have to get used to your opponent's spins and placements and, and things like that, and that definitely never changes. Yeah, and even though uh, Nick trains with Tao, I'm not completely sure how many, you know, how much of actual match-like situations they play each other in. Uh, probably quite a bit, but what with the added pressure of a match situation, things are always different. Serve there by Nick. Gives himself an opportunity for the backhand loop. Tower finding the middle there quite effectively. Wow. Such a compact stroke on the. Uh, Felt like Nick was totally ready for that, but so was Tao. Oh. Wow. Get the feeling we're not going to be seeing that serve again for a while at least. Tao is just so quick on the short pushes. Giving Nick so little time. Tao just looking very, very comfortable in this first game. Takes it 11 4. This is one of the reasons that um, timing is so important on the short pushes. Um, you manage to get in there a little bit earlier, you're both able to play a more effective stroke, and you're able to take away time from your opponent for. Uh, to react to where you're placing the ball. Definitely. <clears throat> Nick re recovers that slow spinny loop with a the four and chop, but that was up to the task. Nice forehand loop there by Nick. Tao unable to make the counter. Cool serve there by Tao. Yeah. Looks like he hit it with the other side of the paddle. That's right. I mean changing both the changing both into a top spin and uh, and changing the direction of the side spin on the serve. It's actually pretty hard to react to unless you're used to it.
and I was just catching Nick off guard with slightly slower loops than he's hoping for. Seems like whenever Nick can actually have the first open, he's doing pretty well this game. It seems like he's been running into situations where he's not able to attack first. Or and he gets into a, a situation where he's forcing the attack. That's right. It's a nice spinny loop there. Really a much tighter game than the last one. It's always brutal when you're down a game and you're fighting hard and your opponent gets an edge. Really good push deep on the table. Another really, really strong serve by Tao. On the eyes on that one, just barely missing the edge of the table. <clears throat> I think what we're seeing is Nick is winning a lot of the points where you know he gets to attack first. Tal's winning a lot of the points where he gets attack attacks first. But the big difference right now is is Tal's winning a lot of the rally points. And anytime they get into a rally where neither has a distinct advantage, Tal's winning the majority of those. And, that's why he has a 2-0 lead. Yeah, absolutely right. And Nick also needs to tighten up his serve returns a little. He missed a whole lot of attempted bananas. And he probably doesn't want to go for such a big stroke against against no spin or pure side spin serves. We see him winding up quite a bit and then the ball just kicks sideways a little too much. There's your long serve. There we go. Takes the point. Yeah. He switches to his forehand side pretty, pretty effectively uh, after seeing that Tao serve with the backhand side of the rubber, uh, of his battle. It's too good by Tao. There's a changeup we haven't seen yet. I think that's the first time he's gone down the line with one of his backhands. I think the size of the stroke is making all the difference on the backhand to backhand exchanges. out to the backhand side with so much power. It's a nice return there by Nick. Totally ready for that long serve. Yeah, kept it low, kept it fast and deep. A little bit of frustration from Nick there. Seems like he's rushing a little bit. I don't know, I'm not too familiar with him. Maybe he just plays this this quickly, but yeah, but you can see that you know he kind of is just picking up the ball and going and serving. Uh, At the net? Wow! Yeah, that second backhand is just a little too big to to fit within the time that Tao is giving him. Seems 
like Nick's getting a little bit frustrated here. He's still in this match, still still definitely in this set. Only down 9-6. Too many uh, errors off of the backhand side from from Nick. I think Tao's ball is just a bit too too high quality. Maybe this game he can try a few more of those down the line balls that were had he was successful with a couple of times, I guess, in the previous games. aimed at the backhand corner, missing just a little. It almost seems like every single one of his backhands catches the top of the top of the net. Uh, we've also seen a fair amount of them just being hit off the edge of the table. Uh, and I think it's just that, you know, it takes him longer to recover than, than, than he has time. Yeah. I mean, and the pace at which Tao is hitting balls at him. Ooh, great forehand loop there by Nick. Crowd giving him, crowd giving him some support there, trying to get him back in this match. And watching him play at the national team trials, Nick is one of those players who does like to play his forehand more often. Um, you know, he likes to play the backhand to backhand rally, but most of his winners generally come from his forehand side. Um, Seems like he's having a lot of trouble with Tao's serve. Yeah, and sometimes you just have to be content with pushing like that time. I'm sure Tao won't miss his backhand that often, but still. with an open face. Uh, so you think he's about to push, but then changes it at the right, right moment. Sir, so, much more composed points by Nick. It was almost a streak. <laughs> <laughs> have to wait another day before the student beats the master. And coming up next, coming up soon, uh, I think we have a raffle. But after that, <laughs> we have the finals of the Tao Swan Pre-National Open uh, featuring Bob Chen and Tao Wenzong. No surprise there.
Dude, you bring me a bobo? What the hell, dude? It's messed up. It's messed up, man. I thought this is all we were keeping. Let's throw it out of bed. Dude, this is for the Malong Blade. All right, all right. Let's do, let's do this. Call my name. I want to win the Malong Blade. We're giving out, we're giving out labor here. I know, I know. So you're, uh, you're, uh, Lucas, right? Lucas, yeah. Thanks for that. All right, I've got it. Awesome. <laughs> At the very least, I feel like we should get an extra wrap this week. <laughs> That turns like a 0.01% chance, or a 0.02% chance. Which admittedly is dumb. <laughs> sneaky, this guy, sneaky. Sneaky, sneaky. Dude, I just want to play on this table. It looks sick to have this much room.
。最后一个就是我自己的俱乐部介绍，因为我这个俱乐部现在目前是我一个教练在这边，然后还有大概四位教练会随着八月份、九月份都会到位。呃，目前大家从那个那个我的这个介绍上面应该能看见，是有运动员是培养他们小孩为主，然后剩下是一对一的课多一些。然后这边天鹅是我们的一个基地，然后我们在八月份、九月份可能还会有一个新的基地，是专门给那些小朋友啊，包括是我的一些正式队员、非正式队员的训练。大概这个成立要是在九月份左右，然后现在目前还没有就是接收运动员，所以说感谢那些家长啊，就是问就是问我吧，就是谢谢你们。然后等到九月份的时候，我会尽快的给大家一个答复。嗯，呃，最后一点就是我和那个鲍勃的一会儿决赛，我觉得我们每次都是我们两个决赛，然后我希望打直板的支持我啊，包括支持我的主场，支持我一下，谢谢谢谢谢谢大家，谢谢。还有个抽奖抽奖抽奖，啊，这个球拍是这个是和市场里面买的不一样，是,是马龙的特制球拍。因为我是也是红王喜特制的那个王浩的球拍，我可以拿到他们特制的马龙球拍，和市和市场里卖的不一样，所以说给大家啊，包括前面三个那个红王喜胶皮也是，红王喜旁边胶皮也是在和市场里卖的不一样，所以说看谁有这个运气吧，我背着手。Eight two nine four six eight。
say that it's catering to you.
really nice backhand down the line from Bob there. Tal looks like he was getting ready to step around and looked like Bob saw that as well. That ball a little too high for Tao to use his backhand on. It's crazy the, 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 edge. the amount of spin on that ball. It looked like it was going off the table by a mile. This loop stays wow. just a little too low. I'm getting the feeling that Bob did have a better workout coming into this match, playing a really tight seven setter with wow. Sean Zhang. And that might be contributing to his faster start here. Yeah. Definitely. Tal certainly no one, not one to take Bob lightly. Nice backhand loop there. Takes the point. Seems like Bob is really favoring these backhand to backhand rallies with, with Tao. And right now, he's been very, very successful in each of them. Quick change of direction in that rally. Tao not quite making it there, reaching a little. Great push there from Tao. Deep Bob's back in. Spin serve. floater serve. Uh, the bounds kind of got Bob off a little. Bob takes the first game, pretty pretty comfortably, I'd say. Yeah. In five. Yeah. Tao's backhand just not dialed in quite yet. Yep. As great of a player as Nick is, it's a little bit of a different challenge to play somebody of Bob Chen's caliber. right and we've seen Tao make backhand counter, loop, counter loops on so many occasions pretty comfortably in fact yeah we saw so quite a few in the last game he played or the game two games ago when he played Peter that's right so even though he's a penhole player and tr and traditional wisdom says that penholders have a weak backhand his backhand is definitely a 2700 level <laughs> You don't get to 2700 unless everything you have is 2700 level. <laughs> <laughs> that, that right there is Tao's bread and butter, though. Third ball attack. His forehand is really where he's going to be looking to win the majority of points. I think Bob knows that, which is why he's much favoring the backhand to backhand exchanges, trying to get that first forehand. might have even caught an edge too. Yeah, just hooking it wired out to Bob's forehand. Putting it out of reach. And Tao racing off to a 4-0 lead. Bob Chen is at 4-0. Bob seems like he's... I mean, a bit, it's been a bit sloppy at the start of the second game. A number of errors. And a couple good shots from Tao, and really, really quickly, you're down 5 0. Oh, 
not a bad shot. Side of the table. It's always just a bit more risky. Sometimes the rewards can be worth it. He does have a lead to work with at this point, but then you do want to be careful because a five point buffer doesn't last really long. Yeah, we saw that with Bob in the last game when he was down 5-1 against, uh, against Sean Zhang. Came back and ended up winning the match. Taladel still sitting reasonably comfortably at 6-3. Wow. Really, really strong form in the right back I think we've noticed uh, in this game that Bob has been flipping a little bit more to the forehand side as opposed to the backhand side, which has given Tao a bit more opportunities to open. on a backhand. <laughs> I didn't even see that. <laughs> and Tao being back right in time. A couple of strong backhands of his own. Seems like when they get into those backhand to backhand rallies, it really depends on the quality of Tao's shot when he goes down the line. Bob mounting a potentially a bit of a comeback here. Tao serving at 10 6. off one more game point. Only one more serve as well. Oh. Oh, a little bit of a cuff the net. In general, those all even out over the course of a seven game, best of seven. Absolutely. Never feels good when it happens to you though. Sometimes the timing matters. Whoa. Oh. Great rally there. Yeah, Almost thought Tao was going to fish that one back. And looks like Tao's taking a time out here. Bob's on a five point winning streak. About five points. I think it was 10 yeah, 4, right? Yeah, he had 10, yeah. 10 5, 10 4, yeah. Bob had those two serves at 10 4, and Tal's gonna take a break, think it over, and try and close out the second game. It's always tough when you take a timeout, though, and it's your opponent's serve. You never know what they're gonna do. In this case, probably warranted, though, to break up the momentum of Bob. So, yeah, a lot of times the timeout just ha sort of helps, you know, calm things down more than the strategy. Really, really strong groups from both players there. Tao just getting, getting the better end of it. So it's all tied up at 1-1. One, one. Bob 
Watson turning to coach Peter Lee for wisdom. <laughs> interesting it seems like neither player is really just thinking about the games for themselves and not really talking it too much with anyone else I think a lot of that is they probably know each other best <laughs> yeah and well they did used to be from the same club in some sense that is true Tao a former coach at ICC Table Tennis Center Bob, a current coach at ICC Table Tennis Center. And that point was made from Tao's counter loop into Bob's middle, forcing Bob to just make a make a top spin defense over there. And whenever you force one of these guys to block on the forehand side, you know the next one is very, very likely to be a defensive shot. That's a really wide serve. That was a good strategy. Really nice footwork there by Bob to get around that ball. very similar to the strategy that won Bob game one, going to those backhand to backhand rallies. Feels like Bob's at a Bob has an advantage when they go into those types. strong opening there. Strong long serve there. Catching Bob a little bit off guard. I think Tao got a little lucky that it didn't come over the net because he had already uh, taken a step back. Yeah, that would have been a really speedy short serve or short short receive. That's right. A couple of strong serves though from Tao. Evens the matchup, four apiece. <clears throat> Bob gets him back with a long serve of his own. Is just a little bit better. The fact that these two players who know each other so well can knock so many points off of each other with their serves stands you know, is real testament to how good their serves are and how important service is in the game of table tennis. Absolutely. Getting a little lucky there. Puts up the finger for the apology. There's another that's, I think, two serves in Bob's favor, three for Tao in, this, in just this one game. Yeah. By Tao. That's incredible. Not only did Tao read that as long, he was able to step around and hit a forehand in the backhand corner. Incredible. Oh. 
Al getting a little lucky there. Bob losing his racket in the process of trying to retrieve that one. This goes to show how, how hard they'll fight for every point. Tao takes his turn at going down. <laughs> Eight apiece. That was the ball that Bob wanted. Two game points and serve for Tao. Off one. Wow. It's it's gotta be extremely difficult, especially in a game where you've lost three outright points just to serve receive. To be down two game points and be facing serve. Oh. It's actually a really good receive, but made a yeah. little fade with his first uh, redirecting the ball to Tao's backhand at the last moment. It seemed like he got caught a little off guard, but he was able to adapt really, really quickly on the fly. That's right. Tao is up 2-1. Oh, Always funny to me on the serve, whenever you watch these guys play, it seems like the long serve works fairly often. But one thing that's easy to miss is that if you continuously do that, these guys are at the level where you'll just get burned way more often than not. It's mostly used as, as a surprise tactic as opposed to a default setting. Two one Tau. Just like that. This was not, a, not so much a ripping forehand from Bob, but still a really strong opening to a fast long serve. A couple of nice returns from Bob Chen. Gives him the early leading game four. Just missing the edge of the table there. As one of his forehands floats long. Really, really strong forehand flip there by Bob. Sets up the follow up attack. I'm almost convinced that it would have come back if the ceiling was a bit higher. <laughs> Another really, really nice receive there by Bob Chen. And that's the purpose of the long serve, is to prevent your opponent from camping out and waiting for that banana flip. They know that they have to guard two places. It makes things a lot more difficult on them. Yeah, that's an interesting point about the banana flip because uh, as the as the chiquitas are getting more and more popular, and even the you know the newer strawberries, um, players even internationally have been preferring long serves more and more. Yeah. Because you eventually get into a counter-looping rally anyway, so... 
Yep. So why not just start there? You watch a lot of the players, including these, including these two here, as their opponent tosses the ball, you can already see them moving into position, getting ready to banana flip the ball. And they're so fast, they're able to recover in case of the long serve, but they're always preparing for the short one. Yeah, that's a really good point about movement on the service return. It's something that a lot of players overlook. Uh, you know, you kind of stay low and stay planted, just watching the contact, but it's just as important to get your feet moving before contact happens. Wow. Pretty impressive by Tao to actually recover that. Yeah. yeah, he saw the ball dropping short and... Still, not, not a point he's going to win too often against Bob. Mm -hmm. I mean, he had to do something and he did. Wow. Wow. Yeah, this was like four strokes in one in you know, a span of a second. That was impressive. <laughs> That's the pace of backhand rallies played with forehands. Full swing forehands. Wow. It's almost like they're baiting out the slow spinning one so they can counter it. Bob makes a pretty strong recovery. Takes the, takes the fourth game without a whole lot of issues. I think it's safe to say he won the fourth game with authority. Yeah. It actually reminded me quite a bit of the of their last encounter at ICC. Um, Bob was playing the short game so well, um, like pulling Tao into the table and then you know and then sending him back with with like a strong opening mm -hmm. off of his push. And you could see that Tao was actually quite late to couple of the pushes and even some of the balls that lifted half long he was able to recover like from below the table height that's you can't really make a strong opening from below table high or even below net high yep it's going to be interesting again to see how these guys adapt it almost feels like every new game that we watch is a completely new game because all their strategies are different to cut that and aggressively drop it uh, short, half long. Really, really nice recovery there by Tao. Oh, wow. wow. Bob goes two in a row for the long ball. Yeah, I don't think anybody was expecting that. Tao leads to fall. Step around there by Bob. Oh. A little bit of help off, help off the top of the net for Tao. Um, Bob recovers, but then Tao stays in the rally. Four and counter loops between these two can go either way. Oh, yeah. There's actually a couple of instances where they've both posted Facebook videos of them counter looping against each other. And Tao's won one and Bob's won one. First towel break of the game. Wow. Chow just grunting his way through 
a powerful backhand for a weapon, and even more powerful forehand. In general, for both players, if they can get their forehand into the other player's backhand, that's going to be a favorable situation for them. Yeah, I think you're right. I haven't seen the backhand control the game so much like we've seen in the past couple of uh, uh, semifinals or quarters. Yep. Um, I think a lot of that is both of their backhands are so strong and so evenly matched. And again, we see Bob baiting out the slow spinny one, just sitting on the counter. Tao needs to think about what's causing it to be late on some of these players. Emerging victorious on that exchange. Tao oh, with a really, really high quality ball there. Bob once again takes the backhand to backhand rally. Tao tried to go down the line. Seemed like the right idea to me, but it's so difficult to execute with such quality backhands coming at you. Yeah. Bob Tran trying to trying to show off a little bit for the crowd there. <laughs> An uncharacteristic mistake. He had, he had flipped this racket around for for the red side. But going back to the backhand conversation, I, you know, it's a very easy shot for Tao to go down the line. But one of the reasons why he's missing it is because of the pressure that Bob is putting on him. Any reduction in quality, and Bob is just going to pounce all over it. And that pressure is very likely what's causing him to miss. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right about that. I mean, the last thing you want is to feed a ball to Bob's forehand. I mean, that completely defeats the purpose of going down the line. You want to do it in a way that's like, you know, where you're fading and making the ball drift wider and wider. Yeah, I mean, even, if, even if he is hitting a quality shot, Bob is still very, very likely to get there and make a quality return, so Bob is taking his first time out of the match. First and only time. First and only. <laughs> After a three, three-point win streak, three-point winning streak there by, by Tao, Bob still holds a small lead in the fifth game of the match. Tao serving at 7-8. Yeah, and it seems like the right idea. I mean, you really want to, I mean, when it's all tied up, getting the fifth game is, you know, you have the momentum in your favor. 3-2 right? up, it's so much pressure on, on your opponent. At this point, every game is so crucial. Let's see how Bob Chen reacts coming out of this first coming out of this timeout. That did seem like a you know, not so heavy ball to go for a flip with. I've given up on trying to read their serves. like Bob was pointing to an edge there. Maybe hit something, caused the trajectory to change just slightly. Great half-long move there by Bob. We're all tied up.
Let's see what Tao can work with the serve here. I haven't seen him pull out the reverse rubber serve yet. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Oh, there we go. Oh. I am now convinced they can hear us. <laughs> Either that or we're the best predictors of all time. <laughs> if only we had that intuition in our matches. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Maybe we just need to play 2700s. <laughs> oh, that was an amazing serve. He started off his motion like it was going to be an underspin serve, but then he. Tapped it on with very little spin, and the ball was fast enough for Bob to not fully recover and react appropriately. Oh. Wow. It's interesting. We've seen so many more instances of Tao doing the slow spinny loop and Bob countering. I haven't seen very many instances of Bob doing the slow spinny loop and, and Tao countering. I think it all just has to do with the timing at which these guys are making their opening loops. Oh, wow. so, Tao is getting to some of these um, opening loops a little, a tad too late. I mean, it's not, it's not super late. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not so bad that it's already like so far down. And, but just a tad later than Bob, and that's giving Bob more of these slower. Uh, easier balls that he can come mm -hmm. to than, than the other way around. Bob is like a lot quicker at the mm -hmm. table getting to his pushes and, and his opening loops a lot faster. Yeah, it also seems a lot like when Bob is pushing, he's pushing either short or just, just half long. Whereas when Tao is pushing, uh, they're either coming short or they're coming long. Not too many of those half longs, which kind of forces a, a slow, spinny trajectory. is kind of interesting because you know pushing super short or, sh or super deep seem like the two things you obviously want to do yep but yeah if you're if you are making so many of these counter hits then you know, why not just go for it. Out taking the first couple of points with some solid backhands. Wow. That broke. <laughs> yeah, that hit the net, net post so hard. That oh, man. It's interesting. Bob is doing the reverse pendulum, which... One of the purposes of that is to have the spin going away from uh, Tao's backhand. He's still getting over there with incredible footwork, still able to banana flip that ball. Bob trying to clean off the ball a little bit. Seems like all these new plastic balls have some sort of white powdery coating on them for at least the first few points that I played with. True. I mean, unless you want to pull out Avcharov's trick. <laughs> Just dumping the ball in your mouth and then giving it a good wipe clean. Wow. That was a pretty good shot. Yeah. Ripping forehand out wide to the backhand side. And such low trajectory. Very little safety over the net, but, but that's how you make a kill shot. Wow. 
Good placement there by Tao. Bob just a little late getting getting around the ball there. It's interesting in how in some of these rallies how these players are able to find each other's middles. Yeah. It's like there's some sort of tracking device there. It's just you see the other person kind of moving further and further out, but then the ball just keeps following them. Bob is back to his backhand winning ways. Once again. Really feels like Tao. If he's gonna, if he's gonna win, is gonna need to get in that forehand. Dangerous serve there. Pays off though. <laughs> On the other hand, we've seen it work a couple of times today. <laughs> Just because no one expects it. That is true. It's That's like the, the double bluff. Exactly. <laughs> Almost like training there. Yeah. yeah. Just keep hitting the backhand till. Tao doing a backhand step around drill there. I mean, I know that hit the net, but that was, yeah. that was impressive. Bob gets up with the long serve. Those long serves are one of those don't try this at home moves. <laughs> These guys practice for hours and hours and able to hit pretty close to that end line almost every single time. There it is again, half long push, slow spinny by Tao and Bob with the rip. If you watch closely you'll see that you know Tao let it drop way too low before yeah. he was able to make that low. I think a lot of it is that. It's just a little too late as well. middle again almost finding his face in that loop getting hit with a bob chin loop would probably hurt yeah. <laughs> bob ties it up though in the sixth game seven all <laughs> Although that's a battle scar I would wear probably. <laughs> Show your friends. <laughs> Not well sitting in the commentator's booth though. <laughs> Let's serve. times where you know peripheral vision is so important in the sport of table tennis so even though you're focused on the ball watching it and waiting to make your loop you still want to see where your opponent is and what they're doing to be honest i'm getting pretty excited i really want to see a game seven again that's <laughs> how it can hold on we just might might just get that lucky Wow. 
little bit of there for Bob. Bob gonna have two serves to try and tie it up. Think he'll serve long? It's fine, I have no idea. <laughs> Remember, they can hear you. left for either player. They're going to have to collect their thoughts just in the few seconds that the umpires let them. Nine ten. Looks like it might have hit the top of the top of the net there. Still nine ten. guys are able to hit the ball so low over the net. I think that was the ball Bob Ben wanted to. He's getting ready to unload on the forehand and unfortunately just caught the edge of his paddle. <laughs> the good news of course is that we do get a game seven. That is true. This is also one of those one of these interesting scenarios. I think Bob Chen is going to be serving first this game, and so at the nine, if if we do end up seeing a nine all, Tao is going to have both serves. For all we know, that might make the difference. Again, neither player with a timeout here. So we are going to see this to its conclusion. One set to decide the champion. The first Swan Tao pre-national open. I think that's what he needs though. It's okay to take some risks and play positive. Bob starting off really strong. Controlled backhand loop to the forehand. Forces the error. Of the forehand loop. Really nice combination there from Tao. Look like a topspin serve. Topspin rips the forehand of Bob. Barely <laughs> missing the short side of the table there. Tao is just waiting, patiently waiting for the right ball to attack or. And basically happy just playing the ball back on. Good placement on Tao's push, but then it's just a little too high. And now we're able to take advantage. <coughs> Bob once again winning the backhand rally. Yeah, we've seen many of Tao's backhands from exactly that same spot. Yeah, miss in pretty much exactly the same way. Feels like Bob stays a little closer to the table on the backhand side than Tao. Really tries to eliminate 
or reduce the amount of time that Tau has to react. <coughs> Closer than I thought it would be, <laughs> given the situation he was in. Bob, the first player to get to five, as you mentioned, it's just so important to be the first to get first to five in, in the deciding game. Just psychologically, it's just such a huge, huge victory. That's right. And a lot of times, there's also this side of the table that's working better sort of thing going on where, you know, you, each person that's on a particular side of the table wins, wins their game. And especially in those matches, when you get to the fifth or the seventh, yep. it's super important to be the first to get to five because... Serving 6 3. Can Tao crawl his way back up? Where did that one spin? Tao with some really nice short game play there. Bob getting to that ball a little bit late, forcing the push long. Tao, Tao able to take advantage with a really spinny loop. That's right, and this time he went to the backhand instead of the forehand where Bob's counter loops have been have been point winners, actually. Yeah, especially this, this strip, the slower, spinnier ones. Oh, really strong man up there by Bob. That was so deep on the table, almost an edge. He also changed direction, going to Tao's forehand side. That's right, yeah, you could see Tao taking a slight step to the backhand, but... Been so. Almost looked like Bob went for a deep push there. Off Jen serving, 7 5 in the seventh. Lucky break there for Bob. Definitely needed to win that point after the service error. wasn't able to get back as quickly as he needed to after stepping in for that short backhand flip. the air from Bob. And this is the situation. No matter what, Bob is, or Tao is going to have two serves. Probably the two most important points of this match. I agree. Or at least one, one serve. <laughs> Turn it around. Oh. 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 
too much there. And Tower has match point, championship point actually. But two serves, it's uh, Haven't seen a long one in a while. One championship point. Again, no timeouts from either side. Oh, goes for the long serve. Tao Chen is ready for it. Uh, wow. Tao goes for broke there. Uh, it almost Monster. seemed like Tao just wanted to end it with a huge forehand. Yeah. Unfortunately, just catching the top of the net. 10 all. What a close game. Bob going with a long serve of his own. And gets rewarded with a match point of his or championship point. do you prefer in this situation? Do you prefer to serve first or do you prefer to serve second? Um, I personally prefer to serve first because I feel like if I'm able to put it to good use there's more pressure on the opponent to I think that's fairly standard. That's fairly standard. Bob unfortunately yeah, you did get the ball just off the, the table. with another championship point, serving at 12-11. Oh. Tao takes it. 4-3 in the seventh game. 13-11 in the seventh. That's how Skype is. That's a good one, yeah. First winner of the first Swan Tao Pre National Open is Tao and Zong. Really, really great match. Well played by both both parties. I'm sure it's, that's not going to be the last match we see between those two. Oh, yeah. Waiting for the next US Open, the next ICC tournament. <laughs> Pretty much any any. Tournament in the Bay Area. Yeah, right. Very, very likely to see these two as the finalists. Yeah, and the next editions of the Swan Tao opens. Exactly. All right. It's been a great pleasure bringing you these matches. I'm Thanks. Abilash. I'm James Wong. Thanks thank for tuning so in. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us.
will respond you to PayPal in the next two days. Thank you. We are rich now. No, I suck. I only won 10 bucks. <laughs> I suck. Next time, next time. You get uh, 40. You have 20 or 40. I don't know. I think you have 40. 60 is 40. You have 40. You have 40. Oh man. You pick me. I like all the dinner. 10 bucks like a doll. That's what I'm talking about. 40 is slightly better. I don't know. Peter's going to be good at 100. 40 bucks for playing now is like a little bit of a That's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> you actually got like 140 if you got to play Tao. <laughs> yeah, Jake. Hey, you're not wearing the wrong jacket, right? What's wrong with my jacket? Uh, this guy. <laughs> Dude, this is the only jacket I have. That's like, that's like a sweatshirt. That's like a uh, warm up jacket. Warm up jacket? Yeah. Were you in the national team? Yeah. <laughs> really? I won the US, I won US nationals as a kid. What? I won US nationals. When? When I was a kid. Jesus Christ. Why aren't you playing anymore? Thank you.